Hey folks, okay, well, now that we have if and else statements, we can start actually doing some error checking on the input that we're doing. So we've mentioned that with both CIN and with SCANF, it's possible that the CIN or the SCANF will fail when it tries to read data from the user. So let's say we ask for an integer and we try and store it in an integer variable, but the user enters blah or something like that, something that, that is not an integer at all. Then the input attempt fails and whatever they typed in, the blah for instance, still gets left sitting in the input stream. So the next time we try and do an, a CN or the next time we try and do a scanf, it's still sitting there. So now that we've got ifs and elses, we can introduce the techniques that we'll use to first off determine if something went wrong and then to notify the user appropriately, right? Give them a decent warning or error message and then take some kind of action to respond to it, whether it's getting them, getting them to try again, whether it's somehow throwing away the bad input or whatever it might be. So that's where we wanna to go today, is to see what we can do. And so we'll go through with both CN and with SCANF to look at the ways that we might sort of take these corrective actions. So this is really what we're interested in, in dealing with. Now, let's uh, start off with CN. And at first, we'll just check to see if the attempt to see in actually succeeded or not. So see in actually provides an extra routine called fail that returns true if the most recent see in attempt failed. And so we can go through and use see in into whatever the variable is, and let's assume it's, suppose it was a, a floating point variable x or an integer variable. And so we do a C in, try and read into it, right? We've prompted the user, please enter a number. We try and read it in, but they enter some kind of garbage, something that isn't a number at all. Then we can detect that it actually failed to read a value using a statement like this, if C in dot fail. So that says, okay, the, the C in thing that we just tried didn't work at all. So we can tell them, you know, you did not enter an integer. Otherwise, it worked, and whatever is in X is actually the thing they typed in. So we can tell them, you entered X, um, and go ahead and use it. So we've got this ability to at least detect if the attempt to read failed to read in a value. Now, if that's the case, then, so if it did fail, then the garbage they entered is still sitting in the input somewhere. And usually that means that we want to get rid of it somehow, before the next time we try and read. You know, if I tell them to try again, if all I do is try another C in right away, then I'm just gonna get that same garbage value again and it's gonna fail all over again. So that's where we wanna go next. Clearing the input stream, getting garbage out of the input stream. So in this case, we need to first do a, a little clear on C in to record the fact that there's no longer an error, we're taking care of it. So we do this if cn.fail, then we'll throw in this cn.clear. We'll talk about the dot notation once we start getting into classes later on, but this is basically saying run clear on cn. And so it's gonna go through and clean up that error flag, but now we still have to go in and get rid of the garbage that's sitting in the input waiting to be read. So this ignore goes through and lets us read a whole bunch of characters and throw it away. And in fact, it lets us specify read up to this many characters or until the end of the line, whichever comes first. So here we'll specify, you know, read up to 80 characters or until you see a new line. We could actually put any character we want here. I'm going to assume we want a new line. So read up to 80 characters or a new line, whichever comes first and just throw it away, skip past it, get it out of the input. So the next time we do a CN, it'll actually be starting after that with hopefully good data. So if we do this, then it would allow us to get the user to try again and read in the new thing they type, and it will have skipped over the old garbage. So let's uh, go through a, a bit more of an involved example here where we're gonna get the user to enter a number in a specific range. So we need to be able to check whether they entered a number at all, 
if they didn't enter a number at all, then the CN that we do is going to fail and we're going to have to clear out the input stream. If they did read a number, then the CN succeeds, right? It actually manages to read a number, but the number's a bad value. So we might have to do some other, give the user some other error messages about, you know, you entered something that was too small or too big. So this is what's going to go on here. We'll say, please enter an integer from 0 to 100. We'll do a CN to read it into our variable. And again, let's suppose it was a float or a, a, an int or whatever it might be. And then we'll do that check. If CN fails, then we'll give them an error message telling them that it wasn't an integer in this case, and that we're going to clear the input out of the buffer. So we give them the error message. We do our clear to get rid of the, the little error setting. And we do our ignore to skip over to get rid of the garbage from the input. So that's how we handle garbage input. Otherwise, they did enter an integer, but it just wasn't in the range that we wanted. So in this second case, the CN worked, but the value they gave was out of range. So we'll say if otherwise, if the user value was less too small or too big, you know, less than zero or greater than 100, then we'll give them an error message. But we don't do that to clear and ignore because CN really did read in their value. If you throw in a, a, a clear and an ignore here, then it's actually going to grab the next thing they type in and throw that away which is almost certainly not what you want. So the CN clear and ignore is only if the CN fails. And then of course the other possibility is they actually gave us a good value. So our else, oh my goodness, and I'm missing an opening bracket right after the else there. Um, so otherwise we'll do our um, C out and say, okay, yeah, here's the value you gave. And yes, it is in the range zero to 100 and we can do whatever it is we want to do with it normally. Now, coming up in our next sessions, we'll, uh, we'll start getting into how we can sort of go through this repeating cycle where if they enter a bad value, we can tell them to try again and read that one in and check and see if it's good or bad. And if it's bad, we'll get them to try again and keep going like this until they eventually give us something valid. But we still don't have quite the tools for doing that. All right, so that's our basic approach for um, CN. For scanf, it's the same kind of an idea. We want to check to see if it read successfully. If it didn't, we want to flush the garbage out of the input stream, and we can proceed normally otherwise. So scanf has a bit of a different approach. It doesn't have a fail associated with it, but when it tries to read stuff in, it keeps account of how many variables it successfully read data into. So it returns this as a return value. So if we call scanf and we say, okay, I want to read, you know, an integer into variable x, then scanf, you know, takes what the user types in and tries to put it in x. And if it was valid, it succeeds and puts value in there. But it's going to return either a zero saying it didn't read anything into any variables or a one saying it did read something into x. So here we're going to use an extra variable count, for instance, that's just going to say, okay, remember whatever, how many values scanf said it read in. So in this case, count will either be a zero or a one. Zero if nothing was read in successfully, the user entered garbage, or one if the user did actually enter an integer of some kind and that value wound up in X. All right, so the return value is the count and what the user typed in goes into X. And again, this what scanf is returning is a count. So if we tried a more complicated scanf where we were reading in multiple values, then it could either read none of them in successfully, or just the first one, or just the first two, or just the first three. So it's giving us a count of how far it got in scanning before it failed, or if it got all the way through and succeeded. So in this second scanf, we're saying, okay, let's do a scanf. We're gonna try and read two integers, put the first one in X and the second one in Y. So in this case, there's three things it could return. It could either return a zero, meaning it didn't read any values in. So the first value was garbage. The first thing the user typed was garbage. So it couldn't get any values read in. Or they might have entered an integer that it read into X and then they entered garbage. So they couldn't put anything in Y. Or they actually gave us two integers. And so it read one of them into X and one of them into Y. So it's gonna return zero if it didn't read anything in successfully 
one, if it managed to put a value in x but not into y, and two, if it managed to put values into both of them. And so that zero, one, or two winds up in count, and the values, the things, the, the values that the user actually typed in wind up in x and y. So again, we've got this this notion of um, functions that are returning values and doing other things. And now for our error checking, we want to return, we want to check and see if count is actually what we expected. So in this first example, after we try our scanf, we'll look at count and say, well, if count is zero, something went wrong. Otherwise, if it's one, everything looks okay. And for the second one, we're going to say, well, if count is zero, then that didn't get anything. Else if count is one, it just got the first one. Else if count is two, we got them both. So similar sort of idea. Here we'll just get the user to enter an integer. We'll read it in, see how many things it read in. It's like going to be either zero or one, and then print an error message or use the value. All right, so similar to our first attempt. So we do our scanf, we'll try and read an int, we'll put it in x, and we'll store the value that scanf returns. Again, what the, what the user types goes into x, scanf gives us a count of 0 or 1. So if the count is 0, it didn't manage to read anything, so they must not have entered an integer, so we can give them an error message. Otherwise, the count must be 1, so we can say you entered an integer and print out whatever it was they actually typed in. So again, we can do checking to see if the input succeeds. But we're still at the point where if it failed, we don't know yet how to get rid of the garbage from the input. So for clearing input, there's a special format sequence to say, read a word and throw it away. So here we're going to kind of assume that um, we just want to get rid of one, one blob of, of text. So they entered, you know, foo instead of an integer. So we just want to read the foo and throw it away. So the format string is this percent star s. So in this case, the star actually means just discard whatever it is we read instead of trying to store it in a variable someplace. So you'll notice that this scanf doesn't have a comma and a variable name in there. And that's because we are throwing away the input rather than trying to put it someplace. So it's just scanf. And then as our format string, the percent star s, and that reads and throws away one chunk of input. So just to go with our range example again, so this time with our scanfs, we'll say, please enter an integer from 0 to 100. Right? We'll have a variable that we'll put the user value into, and a second variable that's going to have the count as to you know, what, how many things scanf read in. So our count is equal to scanf. And then we do you know, our usual percent %d, I want to read an integer, and I want to stick it in our user value variable. If it worked, if they typed in an integer, then the count will come back as 1, and the user value will have whatever number they typed in. And if it failed, if they typed in garbage, then the count will be 0, and it won't have put anything into user val. So if that input count is 0, then they entered garbage. So we can give them an error message, say that wasn't an integer, we're throwing it away. And then we do our scanf percent star s to get rid of the garbage that's in the input. And again, it just reads that thing and throws it away. Otherwise, if we get past that, it's because it did actually read an integer in, it put something in user val. So now we can check if that integer it read in was in the right range. So if the user value was too small, or the user value was too big, we'll give them a different kind of error message and tell them, you know, your value was essentially out of bounds. So it did read it in, right? The scanf succeeded. So it read the value in, the value is gone from the input. So we do not do a scanf star s here. Again, if you, if you throw in an extra scanf star s, it's going to read the next thing they type and throw that away, which is not at all what we want. So again, the scanf star s is only for the case where the scanf fails to read something in. And then, of course, the third case is where they actually gave us a good value, and we can do whatever it is we wanted to do with our normal good data. So this is a pretty common layout. And again, in uh, one of our next sessions, we'll get into how to get it to repeat and get them to try again and try again and try again and try again until eventually they give us something valid. Now, this is all assuming that we use 
either our CN or our scanf to read something directly into a variable of, you know, an integer type or a float type. And so there's a possibility it will fail because the user types in stuff that's not appropriate for that data type. Another possibility that we'll get into a little bit later is to say, well, why don't we read it in as a string first so that whatever they type in, you know, any, any text is, is valid as a string. So we'll read it into a string first and then once we've got that string stored, we'll look at the contents of the string and see if it matches what we were expecting. See if the, the content looks like an integer or looks like a float or looks like a whatever we were expecting. So that is another alternative approach that we'll use, but, um, but we'll save that for when we start getting into strings in bigger detail or in more depth, or when we start getting into holding uh, sequences of characters. In, uh, in an array as an alternative approach. But we'll get there in the not too distant future. Okay, I think that's where I wanted to leave that for now. Um, again, this kind of input error checking is going to become very common in our programs. Usually when we read data from a user, the first thing we wanna do is make sure they gave us something valid. All right, we'll see you next time.